Well, hello, Victoria War Games fans. Uh, this is uh, Gareth and Bard today. Say hi, Bard. Hi, hey. Uh, so today, as promised, uh, everyone last night got their lists in by midnight, uh, in and around midnight, which was very impressive. 18 lists, quite a few coming in right at the last second, which was uh, still beautiful that everyone got in on the deadline. Um, and I don't know if some of you or any of you managed to see, we've got a beautiful diversity of different lists, uh, a few duplicates, but generally overall, um, quite a nice spread of uh, different armies, which is amazing to see, and a bunch of new armies that um, a number of us have never seen on the table, so that'll be great. Uh, a shout out to uh, my compatriot here, Bard, because of his work that he's done over the last few years, we're now up to the largest tournament uh, that the uh, West Coast has seen in the last, uh, you know, at least in the last year. So we okay, sold yeah. out at 18, which is pretty darn amazing. Uh, and a special thanks to those folks coming in from the mainland. We've got, we've got seven coming from the mainland. One is going to be on the island. He's doing a shoot up island, a, a movie shoot and six coming over on the ferry. So really, uh, you know, appreciate that. That's just amazing. And a bunch of us are looking to reciprocate this summer and go over and visit some of your events. Um, okay, so we're gonna get to some logistical stuff. Uh, a few people sent in lists that weren't the full Mantic um, version. So what I did is I took those lists put it on my own Mantic full version and emailed you a copy so that you have a copy, a PDF copy of the full version. Please, when you come on the tournament, bring two copies, one for yourself and one for the opponent. The reason why we like the full Mantic version is we know the points adjustments have been made. So we Mantic know that it's up to Clash of Kins. There com. it is. Yeah, Mantic.easyarmy.com. ManticEasyArmy.com. Shout out to Greg from Mantic uh, Easy Army because he's been really great at getting our tournament registered super fast and any issues we had, he took care of it all. He's amazing. Uh, and the other reason that we like those lists, and you don't have to have it because if you send it to me, I, I just like that. No problem. It didn't take me any time to input, convert over, and send you a copy. But we like having those lists because they have the full details as well. They that way you have full transparency for your opponent. Your opponent can see what your unit capabilities are, what their you know, you know, weaknesses, uh, their cost, all the updates are there. And if there's any you know, key words that are below that on the army list as well, which you don't get on the free version. So yeah, it's uh, worth the subscription for sure. It, I mean, it's 30 Greg. bucks a year. 32 yeah. bucks a year. Yeah, don't buy into the community drama about it. It's uh, it, it's useful. It's not very expensive. No. Um, if you can afford a coffee, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Once a week you can do this, no problem. So um, that's kind of uh, makes things much easier. And it kind of sucks when you're playing somebody and you don't know if they're even getting their own rules right because neither person has a full copy of their army list. And exactly. Referring to phones and stuff like that, don't do it. Bring lists. That's, that's old tournament etiquette and uh, it still carries over. And... Thank you. Nice segue there. Tournament etiquette. We all know we have fun, and, and last time there was no issues, and we haven't had any issues in the last couple of tournaments. But we like to put a little reminder here. Um, I, you know, it's been said that on the island we like to, we're pretty stringent, or we like to go by the book. That's just because we like to play by the rules. So we always like to put in our, our lists, you know, own your mistakes. What we mean by that is there's no take backsies in our tournaments. And why that is, is the rules for Kings of War are specifically state uh, unit activation. So if you activate a unit and you complete that, and you complete the, that, that unit's, unit's activation, activation specifically by the set of the rules so and you activate yep. another unit, you cannot go back and start saying, oh, I messed that up. I need to, can I take that back? Yeah. That is, that is not Kings of War. Yeah, if you please read don't, the rules. Please don't put your opponent your in that awkward position where yeah, they have to yes or no it. Um, because if they don't give you what you want, they feel that they may be uh, sportsmanship penalized. Yeah. So um, just, uh, just, just play as, as to the rules. Um, try and play kind of professionally in a way. Yep. Um, don't be a dick about it. Um, but yeah, um, this is uh, an actual competition. So um, try and play because that's what really uh, separates the, the good players from the bad players, the ability to keep concentrating 
and uh, keep doing things correct. Now, I know I will at least make mistakes. Oh, every I'll, game. I'll, I'll make a couple mistakes. <laughs> every and, game. And I will never ask to, to take no. them back, even if I forget things in order. Um, you know, there's some stuff like, I, I think, the automatic stuff, which you shouldn't really be forgetting. It's not really a decision of yours. Things like, you know, aura yep. impacts and uh, regeneration, stuff yeah, like those that. Are, those should be done um, because they could have an impact otherwise. Yep. Those have to, those are, you know, I know regen, for example, if you forget you regen, you don't have a choice. You have to go back and finish that. Uh, because there are ways that you could use that to your advantage if you choose not to regen. Maybe you've got the crystal pendant or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, retribution, boom. Uh, but that's, okay, logistical, we're all going to have fun. Just play by the rules. No take backsies. Um, last last couple of turns, we haven't really had, we haven't had any really issues with that. Really, yep. Full lists. Uh, 18 people is going to be fun. Uh, please get here on time. Get here early. Get uh, Bring two lists, one for yourself. And one for your opponent, full list, like I said. Um, and we're playing hard clock, death clock. You run yep. out of time, you're out of time. Yep, yep. Um, now, depending on the reliability of the internet connection at the location, we actually have one at this place. We can only have 18 players, but we do have internet. Um, we may, I may be trying to set up the, uh, the streaming uh, from there for the day. Um, if not, I'll do what I did uh, from the other hall, which is just do the recordings, yep. um, edit them, and post them up. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. I think we're ready to start the fun stuff here now, which okay. is to go through the list. Bard has done some beautiful um, analysis here. Cursory. Cursory analysis. Cursory Compared to the analysis. last ones. Yeah, this is just a quick thing because we got the list in last night. Um, I had a late night. It was club night last night. We yep. had lots of games of Kings of War at the club. It was awesome. Yep. Um, and if you're a, uh, a Victoria local and you're Kings of War curious, even if you don't have an army, uh, we have club armies. Um, we can uh, help you out and uh, you know, teach you how to play the game. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to switch us over to uh, one of the view, one of the one of the quick things I made. Um, I didn't go through the whole analysis. I didn't have time yet, maybe uh, for the website, but uh, I'm going to switch us over here. Okay then. All right. So what we're looking at here is, if you want to also look at the um, the uh, list metrics uh, PDF file, there, Gareth. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to a mine as well if I can find it. All right, so um, what I did was I just, uh, out of interest, I kind of looked at uh, the way things uh, were. So um, I quickly generated a durability stat. Now, it, it, it does have a problem. Um, it does not take into account Big Shield. Um, right. So you've got some armies, uh, notable, notably uh, Brian ha Happy Nooks, and uh, I think Big Shield is also, you see you were seeing on the, one of the Trident Realms army? Yeah, so I mean, it's funny, you look at that. Brian's is third, ranked third for durability is without probably, yeah, Big Shield. Yeah, yeah, he is probably uh, above that uh, yeah. quite a bit. Um, Drew Allen, as you'll see his list, he has a lot of defense six uh, dwarf stuff. Right. Uh, Daniel Hahn has um, defense five and uh, mostly, you know, these Kingdoms of Men army. Um, but you know, getting an idea of, of how we're going there. So, so back this up a second. So mm -hmm. dur durability for you means defense, basically. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, just basically, it doesn't count regeneration. It doesn't count anything. It's just a raw because regeneration doesn't really come into it until um, after right. that one round. Right. So um, bark skin would affect this. I would expect if you have bark you skin, know, skin absolutely. Um, I, that was that was gold last night in my game versus. Um, of course, it would be defense Mr. Dale. Oh yeah, I, I rolled like five dice and like five, five, four, five, five, and, you know, it was crazy. See, and the beauty of that is, if I look at you and I've got say six lightning and a bunch of little, you know, I don't have a lot of shooting, mm -hmm. like 10 shooting, mm -hmm. and you put five extra wounds on that unit, all of a sudden that's gonna make me choose Something a else. different yeah, target. Exactly. And yet that could have been my priority target. Yeah, exactly, it, there's, uh, there's a little bit of, um, forcing people to make a, a deterrent value yep so, which is pretty damn awesome okay so um looking at here uh durability uh generally like you're saying it's the elves the elves and the beastmen and you know are kind of down towards the bottom and defense then you have five defense yeah, four then you have you know the goblins and uh yep. and, and stuff like that kind of up there was in the middle. Um, all right, so also put in a maneuverability, and all I did there was it was just a sum of the speed of the army. Right. Okay, so you know, you see, look at the dwarves. 
Okay, if anyone thinks that the dwarves don't need a, a speed bump, <laughs> you know, like to come they're, up, not even, they're in the wrong they're, 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 not, they're not even anywhere near yeah. um, what they've got. You know, you've got Brian Happy Nooks. Um, he has a lot of um, maneuverability in his army. So does Dale. Dale surprised me last night. He rocked up on the table as we were deploying. And uh, I had completed deploying, and all of a sudden, he put four regiments of cavalry on the table and yeah. that was very scary which is great because dale used to be closer to where drew's army was dale was playing very much a dwarf list mm -hmm. an abyssal dwarf list with with this with the uh, stone golems or whatever they're called um but now he has those cav he has the orc cav and then he has those uh you know the centaur cav whatever they're called and he now last night he was it was very much a learning curve. He's getting used to how to maneuver with those and use mm -hmm. those again because he's been playing the dwarf list. Yeah. Right? St stand back and you're going to take the charge every time. Well, now he can dictate that. Yeah. Uh, I think he wasn't used to it because um, he was charging with single units at a time against yeah. single units. Like he needs to be double charging. Double charging. All double the time. charging. So um, I think that uh, after his two last night games, um, single charging, I think he'll go double charging. And I think if he's, if he, I think when he sets up, if he spaces, for every calf, he mm -hmm. puts um, a, uh, a yeah. unit of what are they? What are they called? Oh, the slave riders. No, because they're the same height. He's got to put the what you call it? Uh, what are they called? The gargoyles. Gargoyles. Their height too, because okay. then he'll be able to see with those, yeah, yeah. Both he, those he, units. Yeah, right? he can chaff up with his gargoyles. Yeah, so, yeah he's, he's got some really good tools in his list, but uh, we'll discuss that as we're going along. Yeah. Um, okay, so you see the dwarves are down near the bottom, um, as as kind of expected. The elves are kind of in the middle. But, and then you look at it, you've got, yep. you go from the second and bottom, which is 82 for the Abyssal. Yep. And then you go to, up to Nico, mm -hmm. which is, he's playing the Brotherhood Army. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a, a spectrum there of 82 to 95. Yep, yep. Which is, you know, that's, that's pretty mm -hmm. close, mm -hmm. right? That's, I mean, there is some variability there, mm -hmm. but it's all in the 80s and 90s. It's then, then you have four lists that are in and around the 100 range there between Dan Wright, uh, interesting that the beastman Zane, yeah, yeah, uh, Pudwell and Mr. Happy Happy Nook is surprising because he doesn't really have crazy fast stuff. It's just all of it is speed five or six. Yeah, well, he, he does have the three uh, fight wagon. They're only speed five. They're only speed fives. Yeah, but okay. he has the two flyers. Yeah, two flyers, Grony Snark. and but I think it's volume of units there. Pro probably yes, yeah. so, because he has so many units. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking that might be uh, kind of useful. Yeah, it's funny how maneuverability ends up being the qu just have quantity. Qu quantity. Qu quantity becomes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, then uh, I looked at the drops. There it is. They're fairly straightforward. Brian Happy Nook, 19. That Gold explains the, the maneuverability. The Goblin Spam um, yeah. going on there, uh, as well as the hard hitters. Um, it's yeah, it's uh, looking at all these, there's some kind of like, yeah, it's a 2300 list. That's a 2300 list. That's, you know, yep. you can definitely tell the difference between playing 2300 and, and 2000 or 9095 plus five. Yep. Just in the uh, the builds of the list, you know, you're, you're looking at more repeats of, uh, of expensive stuff. Yep. Um, all like big, big, uh, big critter type stuff. So it's been very, it's very interesting. Yeah, they, they both play very differently. It's not that you can, uh, it really changes the game, I think. It does. It, I, I, it is. A, it's a different game. I said. I said it this online game. recently. Yeah. Uh, it's still Kings of War. It's just a different version of Kings of War, and I, I like them both. Yeah. I it, like them both now. The more I play this level, the more I'm enjoying it. Does it? Does it mean? Is it my favorite version of Kings of War? Probably not. Yeah. It's not to me. I don't find it as challenging as the lower point right. values, um, and I don't find it being so much about um, being, being less about the the army matchup. But for, the bigger but, ones, because of the skewing, if, if skewing's done. But to be clear here, mm -hmm. I love Kings of War so much mm -hmm. that if you were to ask me if I had to choose to play a game of Kings of War, mm -hmm. and it had to be 2,300 points over mm -hmm. any other game, what would I'd I still, choose? I'd still play Kings of Kings War. Of War. Yeah. It's like yeah. going from an A+, plus to maybe still an A+, plus or an A, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still pretty high, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and, and then going back to the drops here, back on topic. Mm -hmm. People were asking, a number of people say, you know, I'm trying to figure out how many drops should I have at 2300? Mm -hmm. Well, you look here, you've got you've got two that are at the top end, 19 and 17 between Brian and Daniel. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got a number of 16, 15s, and 14s. Mm -hmm. So the average, I would say, the average drops is probably 14.5. 14, 14, yeah, because I was getting 12 at 2,000. Yeah. With another 300 points, you should be able to get two units. So 14s 14 seems, seems to be a, to be a reasonable average. average, yeah. Plus so. or minus one, right? maybe, right? Yep, yep. Um, and then unit strength. Look yeah. at this. Daniel Hound with his, uh, his Kingdoms of Men. Um, you'll see why when we bring up the list. Yeah, I'm excited to show this list. It's uh, actually a good idea. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting at looking at... Kind of like uh, your gonna... human that you built once. Yeah, 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 right? it, it does. There's uh, the, a lot of foot guard and yep. stuff like that. It, it's like uh, multiple small units, medium units, whatever. Yep. Um, so that's kind of looking interesting. Uh, Tony up there with 28. Yeah, yeah. So and Christoph and Zach up there as mm -hmm. well. Uh, interesting that Brian, with all those drops, obviously goblins, you're not going to get crazy high unit strength with regiments. Mm -hmm. Only sitting at 26, but it's only sitting at 26. Yeah. Um, and again, here you see the average. The average is probably somewhere in the mid-20s. Yeah, I was, if I'd had more time, I was going to um, try and add like a ranged um, thing. Like rating range. like 0 yeah. to 12, 12 yeah. to 24 type, uh, 20, uh, 24 to 48, right. or 24.1, whatever, 48, just to kind of see how that's going. But, you know, this was a last minute thing and discussed this morning. So what I'm going to say to you folks, we're going to go through the list, list by list in a second. Mm -hmm. I want you to all, if you, when you see this after, I want you to all put your predictions. Put a little prediction, put your top three predictions, who you think the top three placements, pick your horse. Who do you think is going to place in the top three? Uh, at the end of the tournament and pick a couple, you know, based on when you see these lists and go, oh, I like the look of that list. Uh, and tell us at the end there what you, what you think. Just put a little comment in the chat or whatever else who your favorites are. All right? All right. So bringing up lists. Okay. So um, the first one is my Sylvan Kin Barkskin list. Now, um, I've played this list twice and it's won both times. Um, one big one, one big win, one medium win. Um, it's it's actually it's a it's a very good toolkit army. Uh, it is making use, as particularly of the master hunters and the uh, the Sylvan Glade stalkers. But I would say that my real power in this list is the Windborn and the Stormwind cavalry. Looking over, mm. so. First of all, you know how I feel about you playing elves. Mm. Any elf. Uh, anything that, anything with elite. Anything with elite that allows you, because Bard is on record as one of the worst rollers of ones. Mm -hmm. I've, I've often said we should take Bard to the World Championship of Axis and Allies because he would kill it. Mm -hmm. He just rolls so many ones. Of course, there you'd roll sixes. Yep. Um, but looking at this list, you've got, as you said, you have all the toolkits. For you, surprisingly, this is where, because uh, I always find when you play at the 2,000 point level, I find your unit strength always to be a little low. Mm -hmm. This, you all of a sudden, you're you're right on the average, where you yeah. have as many drops as everyone else, yep. and elves having a unit strength of 23 is actually pretty decent. It's not decent. too bad, yeah. Yeah. So, and you have toolkit. Yep. Like these master hunters, one's got the, the axe of the giant slayer, which is going to add that ability, mm -hmm. and then the other one has the harvester. Mm -hmm. So you're sneaky being there. I can take care of big stuff and I take care of little stuff yeah, along yeah. with the fact that you have those damn Glade Stalkers. Yes. Everybody loves the Glade Stalkers now and I can see the why. Various versions, they're all useful. They're, they're a little pricey. They have good unit strength. They're a good multi-role unit. Um, I think without them being as they are, uh, this list would struggle quite would, a bit. You need them. Because you know yeah. what? P uh, shooting without piercing it's very matchup dependent. You know, um, if I go up against um, the dwarf list, I think I'm going to have a very hard time. Uh, when I was playing against Dale last night, um, I had to ignore like every all these defensive stuff. It's not even point. Uh, there's not even a point shooting at defensive stuff with with the the uh, no, blade you're... stalkers. But no piercing. Um, you know, maybe if I have to clean up. Um, against fives, no, I don't really want to shoot fives either. Right. Um, fours, uh, yep, I feel comfortable sh uh, attacking fours. Threes, fine. Now, the other thing is their defense, mostly across this army, is so low that if anyone manages to get to it, um, they, they're, they're gone. Like, you, yeah. you're, you're, almost all your hits are carrying through to wounds. Yeah, because of the low, low defense, right? But you're yeah. going to sit back and you're going to click away and reduce the unit strength before you have to engage. 
You do have those a couple of nice long range threat with a storm, as you said, with a storm wing ca cavalry. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Giving them the brew of strength, so they all of a sudden don't have to rely on that thunderous two in the second round yep. if it goes to that. Yep. That's nice to have 16 attacks hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, and then now wounding with the plus one at they, least. They were reliably doing like 10 damage uh, last right. night's game. Um, yeah. I got them on the flank of uh, Dale's army, and uh, I took out um, uh, a unit of abyssal half-breeds, a horde of uh, black souls, right. uh, ran over a character, and then chased down a unit of obsidian golems, golems and rechar recharged them in the last turn of the game. Right. Um, I think they are, with the uh, Potion of Strength, um, are just an amazing unit. I'm thinking they might be one of the best cavalries in the game. Nimble, Speed 9 Nimble. Is huge. Uh, Pathfinder. Yep, Pathfinder and, with Thunderous 2. It's great, they're yeah. a great unit. And I usually couple um, that wing of my army up with the Avatar of the Green Lady, so she's healing them up, so they're very difficult to get rid of. Yep. And another thing is, um, with the Windborn, you can literally uh, engage somebody on the flank, you know, your, your, your cav is uh, in there in the fight. Uh, the next turn, um, you can sidestep your, you know, withdraw, sidestep your cavalry uh, four and a half inches. Yep. Then use the Windborn and, and uh, using their nimble ability, move forward and shoot the unit they're engaged with in the side and push them away so they're not even in the viewing arc yeah, that's of clever. the unit anymore. So you can basically hang out somebody to dry right on a flank if you really want to penetrate with that unit there. Um, that's all in theory. I haven't managed to pull it off yet because I only came up with it last night and uh, I didn't really get to use it. Well, we've seen you experiment with the Windborn a number of times on the stream mm -hmm. and, and, you're, and you, you were getting to be very good with them. We noticed that they were such a pain in the arse because they, they have that beautiful uh, wind blast mm -hmm which never has any modifiers, mm -hmm. never has any modifiers, yep. but I guess it would now with the Spell Ward. Yeah, yeah. Because so that would be the thing. only thing that would yep. affect it. Yep. Uh, but not a lot of armies have the Spell Ward mm -hmm. right now. No piercing though, but it, no, you're but not no using piercing. it for that. It's the manipulation of It's the uh, manipulation. Units. You're gonna get seven shots, re-rolling ones, always hitting on fours, mm -hmm. and getting to push stuff back out of the charge range. Mm -hmm. You know, like let's say it's my chariot, my my 16-inch yeah. chariot. Yeah. I've moved myself within 16. And I feel sorry that. for the dwarves. You know, like one yeah. step forward, two steps back. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> they're, no. They're, they're too slow. You know. <laughs> yeah. We're, dwarves. we're We're more sprinters. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Um, no, I like uh, Bart. I like this list. I've actually said to you, Purse, and I'm not kidding when I say this. This is the scissors to my paper. I've had some practice games in the last mm -hmm. two weeks against elves. We didn't play. No. Okay. Uh, but I've had some really tough times because defense four, with all that elite, mm -hmm. makes a big deal when you're plucking 13, 14 wounds on my shotgun. Yeah, yeah. I, I would expect that I should be able to take out one unit a uh, turn um, when we're up against defense four. That's just crazy. So Dale. sometimes too. Or, yeah. you know, like uh, my first turn last night's game versus Dale, I took out two units of um, gargoyles. But not that they're, that's a big deal. But uh, weak chaff, they're very good at clearing. Just flicking them away. Things. Yeah, just flicking them away. Yep. And uh, when he uh, when he charged with his uh, three cav units, because the other one got uh, wavered from the, um, the windborne, uh, he bounced off my line. Yeah. And then my uh, Stormwind Cavalry just came through and just smashed into the flank and, was, and just ran his way out all the way along the line. Yep. It was it was beautiful. I couldn't have asked it to have gone much better. So uh, the one thing I'm going to say about this, objectively, is that I'm going to pretend this is not you here. Mm -hmm. What would I say about this list? It all depends on your early matchups. Yep. If you face up against the dwarves in the first round, I'm going to be having a hard time. You're going to be having a hard time. If you get the right kind of matchup, mm -hmm. let's say you face a rat army or something mm -hmm. like that with defense four, mm -hmm. well, that could be the, a good day for you. You start. Yeah, mm -hmm. defense six spam uh, is going to be a, a very difficult game for me. Defense yep. five. Um, pretty bad. Uh, defense four and below, I think I'm uh, I'm fairly okay. You're definitely okay. And it does. Uh, the army does actually have um, some answers to high defense. The boss race with a hammer of measured force. Yep. Um, that's useful. Um, the wilt father. Oh, always an and answer the, the to legal. any problem. Yeah. Now, now it's the only way you could really get the wilt father yeah. is by taking this so, army. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so. so. That's nice. He's doing fairly well, and the Hunters of the Wild make an actual fairly durable um, line to be hit 
by you know basically create those uh, those counterattack opportunities. Yep. They hit something, they bounce, and then you hit them with something else. All right. And of course, master hunters for sniping characters, tree herder, yeah. elven archmage um, for the bark skin, which has been amazing in this army, and avatar the green lady. All right, let's uh, go kit. to very next nice tool one. Kit. Okay, so the next year, army, I guess, is this one. Rats, rats, rats. I don't know who this is. Okay, so this is a, this is a, this is our fella from Up Island. Mm -hmm. uh, he's coming down from a photo shoot, uh, a movie shoot, or something like that. Uh, I believe it's Daniel. Uh, no, Dan, not Daniel. It is. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, Ben's. Ben's coming up from uh, Up Island. Uh, he he is. He's like a 70-30 can make it. Depends on the film shoot. So. This would be our odd man out, but we're we're hoping he can make it because he's really excited to uh, to make it. Ben's got a really I'm a rat I'm a rat player, right? That's that's what I love. Rats is is uh, this is the actual rat build that it's very different build from mine, which I love to see. You look at this unit this army to begin with, and you start looking at it, and he he has a lot of it's almost like a, a an old Warhammer slave army. He's got his infantry is is quite, you know, cheap. He's got spear warrior horde. He's got a regiment of, of spear warriors. So these guys are, are you know, hit on fives and and cheap, cheap, cheap. He even has a cheaper than that a regiment of warriors, as well. And this gives him a lot of unlocks. Uh, he's got claw shot. Interesting choice. Blessing of the gods. So this gives him the reroll on ones. Yep, the elite. Five shots with elite. Sit in the cover somewhere and just pl plunk away. Yeah. Twenty points on so many, so few attacks makes me feel. Yeah, yeah it, that's an interesting choice. That yeah. was the one item. Yeah, I guess but it's not too bad. It's not bad. I mean, if he has the points to do it, which we're looking at, uh, and we're building up to what he really is taking. Here's the nucleus of this army. He's got two hordes of nightmares. One of those has the brew of sharpness. Uh, so interesting choices here. I like to see nightmares because I look at them myself and go, the crush one is a problem. They do have rally one, which he can add, and those will bump up all those chaff infantry we just talked about because they're hordes, so they're bumping each other up. So instead of being 14, 16, they're going to be 15, 17 and bump stuff up that's around them. They do have some shooting with the blight uh, cannons. Yeah it's, yeah, it's 12 inches, but steady aim. Steady aim. Hitting on fours with 18 attacks. Yep. Um, yeah, that's that's not bad at all. That's uh, that is like six more shots than the uh, the Sylvankin uh, Glade Stalkers, um, even the regiment, um, paying quite a bit more. But actually, you know what? I like these. This is a good multi-use unit. It is, isn't it? Now, because mm. now because when you look at these are tech, right? Mm -hmm. We're coming to the stuff that actually helps this stuff. He's also got a warlock in there with the boomstick. Okay. So he's got lightning bolt five and bane chant three. Oh, well, we all of a sudden, those nightmares Crushing are going to have crush two. And don't forget, they have vicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then he has a war chief who has the morning foe blade and the aura vicious infantry. So that really only buffs his um, spear warriors and his warriors or individual characters. Which is fine. I take the same. I, the Morning Foe Blade is a nice choice to protect him, so that'll give him the duelist. Yep. But now here we are. We've got the Smoke and Mirrors and Death Formation. So mm. he's getting two Shredders, the Ratkin Formation, and those things are Shredder 48 inches, Blast D3, Ignores Cover, Pierce 1, Shattering. That's it. That's great. So all of a sudden he's hitting you with those 12 inch range. Full attack sitting on fives. You know what? Um, the uh, Abyssal Dwarves, their artillery piece with the three shots uh, has piercing one as well. Yeah. Hitting on five. So this is better than even that. So four shots yep. at that range. And he's got two of them. That's, two of them. That's, that's awesome. Yep. And then he's got the Death Engine Spewer, which is uh, D6 plus seven attacks. Iron Resolve for all of his tech. Mm -hmm. And remember, his tech include those... Um, those uh, uh, rat ogres. The, the, the nightmares, yeah. Yeah, so he's getting iron resolve for those. Oh, those that helps out, yeah. It's Crushing one, inspiring rat formation, steady aim, and uh, this thing has a, it's a 18 inch pierce two range. Yeah. D6 plus seven. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not bad. So eight to, what, eight to 13? Eight to eight to thirteen shots, uh, hitting on with four steady hitting aim on again. Fours? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, we're bad. starting to see this like, oh, wow, hang on a Nerf, second. Nerf, dash 16, that's not bad. Defense 4, meh. 
Yeah, like, for me, if I was facing that sort of thing, um, that'd be a, a narrow target as well. well. But it's not going to be dash 16 because he's going to get yeah, the rally, rally two on Rally it. two, so yeah. Dash 18. Wow. And it's defense, it's only defense four though, as mm -hmm. you said, yeah. He's got a mutant rat fiend in there, which is... Um, Radiant Supply. But that's only for vermin only. Mm -hmm. That only gives to the vermin. But it's uh, crush two, rally one again. Mm -hmm. So he should be able to be getting that rally max two bonus all around. Yep, yep. Uh, and this thing's going to be dash 18. And if it's near the stuff that gets the rally, it'll be dash 20. Mm -hmm. uh, vicious in melee as well. So 10 attacks. But here's, this is my favorite thing about this army. It literally opened my eyes to this. And I'll start thinking about this with my rats. Mm. Look at those night terrors. Yep. They're tech. Yep. And they're, they're nimble. They're nimble. Five attacks, crush two. They're gonna, if they're in that area of iron resolve, and you think, well, they're only 12, Defense 14. Five. Defense five, but rally two. And they speed could be 14, nine. 16, speed nine. Speed nine. And That's... look at the cost of them. 135 yeah, that, that's points. points. Like I, I look at some of the Empire of Dust characters, just the like your normal, your normal um, priest type dude, and I think they're approaching those kind of points values, and you get nothing like this. Nothing. Yeah. And if three of those or two of those are hitting the same target yep. in the turn, maybe one on the flank. Yep. Holy smokes. Yeah, three of them is going to be a handful. Um, and that's 15 drops, 21 unit strength. I at first, at first glance, I looked at this list and went, where is he going? I really don't like those warriors, uh, you know, spear warriors, they're okay. And then I started seeing the real hammer drop. Yeah. All that tech, it's a tech yeah. army. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really exciting to see, see how, how it does. Mm. All, All right. right. Goblins, goblins oh. over. <laughs> okay. Oh, Shout out let me to see, Mr. Three, Brian. Three, three war trombones, that's Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's going down. So first you see right off the top, he's got two hordes and three regiments of goblins. So yeah. there it is right there. That'll, that unit st strength alone is 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 unit strength just in rabble. Yeah, and, and for the price, for the price. points, 125, Dirt. that's crazy. That's his chaff. Yeah. Right? For his front line. And then there it is, there's the hammers. He's got mm -hmm. three mincer mobs. Now the thing that I never realized at first, the weakness in these mincer mobs is what? Uh, being attacked in the flanks, not it, having being the big shield at the front. Not having the big shield with only defense four and their speed, their only speed, speed five. five. So they're yep. probably the slowest chariots in the game, but for good reason, because they have the big shield in the mm -hmm. front, defense six, they got brutal, crushing one, thunderous one, uh, and the relatively- Do you think it was Yeah. D6 plus 21 attacks. Okay, it's crazy. It gives one of them one of them the brew of sharpness, so all of a sudden that's that's the that's the priority because it's hitting on threes. Uh, one of them has the Jesse's boots, and the other one doesn't have an item. Uh, so three of those though. If one of those hit you, they could literally wipe out a Yeah, unit. yeah. He double charges something. They're fairly wide. Double charges something, he should he should smack it. It doesn't matter what it is. Yep, yep. And you know, being chariots, they avoid the you know the phalanx stuff there it is. and all that. Nothing. That that passive buff they receive. Yep. Um okay. Uh, and then we go down to the war trombones. Always uh always thing. now you think oh these aren't that big eight ten. Well th for him they're chaff. They're chaff that dish out twelve inch piercing steady aim on fours. Uh, and he just moves them around. They're not nimble, so that's the one thing I always try to remember about them. Mm -hmm. But it, if you can click those off, uh, it's probably a good idea because those can be end game stealers when he's got one or two of those mm -hmm. hitting you on fours and wounding you with a plus one there. Yeah, yeah. Now, Brian is wisely, because it is Brian, and Brian knows how to play the game, he's got his uh, I'm going to deal with you flyers. And yeah. he's got three of these, two wingets and the king, which is upgraded. So he has three flying threats that can zip up the field, burn those objectives, grab counters or whatever he wants, and look at the investment there, 120, 120, and 100. Yeah, yeah, that's not a lot of points. That's not. And he didn't really go and um, do the uh, host Shadow Beast uh, combo, which is the big thing with Grony Snark right now, giving because of the uh, the exploding attacks. Right. So he's uh, he's actually restraining himself a little bit. A little bit. Um, but I think you might you probably need to lose a, a Mincer Mob Regiment um, or to something do that. like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, I, we, we've seen how effective he can be with this army, and this mm -hmm. is this is his newel tooled up. He's got two flaggets, one with one with the bane chant. Mm -hmm. um, he's got now he's got new allies here. His allies are, I guess this used to be, as he likes to put it in his narrative, mm -hmm. this was an ogre army and they all eventually died off and the siege breakers are looking around going, where's everybody? And some goblins joined the party. Uh, and he's just playing with some ogres, the siege breakers, which are the best of the ogre list. And of course, um, he has a red goblin bigot to uh, inspire. inspire those. So in this army, you look at it, he has five solid hammers but really he's got more than that when you throw in those flying threats and everything else as well. Yeah, this is gonna be a brutal army to fight against. Um, I, I'd almost be tempted to avoid combat with his front line and just bounce, just, You'd have to. just, just uh, scrum up the, uh, the goblins. Yeah, you can, if you go toe to toe with this list and not consider that you're gonna be outgunned, outnumbered, and you, you don't try to whittle him down, um, mm -hmm. and of course he's not gonna give you much time to do that. Yeah. You're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. If you engage on his terms, mm -hmm. it's not going to be a pretty game and it's going to be one-sided. It, it feels to me like it should be all or nothing depending on the thing. Either you're going to go balls to the wall and like really get in there and try and smash everything as quickly as you can yeah. um, to get rid of that numeric superiority he has there and, and kill off his easy to kill unit strength, which is mostly goblin rabble. Yep. Um, or you're going to try and avoid combat as much as he can um, and use his own army against him. Um, but that's all scenario dependent. That is, depending on the, which scenario, right? Yeah, you get, yeah. Uh, the lists that I could see giving this one a trouble, uh, a problem, uh, and uh, I didn't say that one about the rats earlier. Which lists do you think would give that army a problem? I think this list gives that rat army a problem. Um, and I think um, uh, a flying list would give that rat army a problem. Now this army, I think we're looking at the Trident Realms could give it an issue. Uh, Dan's, all the upper tier lists, Dan's um, forces of nature could give this army a real problem. Mm -hmm. And then maybe, just maybe, the Sylvan King. The, the Sylvan King or, or elves, if they can yeah. stay back and pluck yeah, things keep, away. Yeah, keep out, keep out of trouble. Yeah. If they can keep out of trouble, we'll see. Yep. We'll see if that matchup happens or not. If we'll see. Right. I, I don't want to be Brian's dream crusher. <laughs> Nobody don't. <laughs> All right, so next is um, uh, uh, the other Brian. Yeah. Is uh, this uh, elf the army. Elf army. This is his high elf army. And we can see right off the tap, uh, this is what I think every high elf army should have. Two beautiful hordes of palace guard. Yeah, one with a brew good. of strength upgrade. Yeah, Gord, look at that nerf. Twenty-two, twenty-four on those bad boys. One has crushing two elite. The other one has vicious crushing one elite. So, and these boys dish out damage. Yeah, yeah, they look fairly reliable, but the pricey. They're very pricey for what they do. They are. That. That's the center, right? He probably plucks those in the center and says. I feel about 50 points too expensive to me. You but, really? Yeah, maybe, maybe 30 points too expensive. You know, like, uh, it is 25 attacks hitting on threes with elite. Mm. Mm, I look guess. At the nerd but too. but the, uh, the defense is only four. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. 22, I guess. 24 nerve. I think that's the big thing. It, but you need to buff it. You need to be able to heal it. You need to be able to- Bane chant in there chant and it. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But of course, what do we go to next? Uh, the kindred Glade Stalkers. Glade Stalkers. Right? So these are the Kindred version. So they don't come with stealthy. Nope, What's they, the difference they, with these they guys? They have melee three rather than melee four. There it is. For so, the, Sylvan King ones. So these guys can hit in combat as well as shoot. Elite Pathfinder Scout, just like, I mean, I think that those three things at the top, all Glade Stalkers have. They all have Elite, they all have Pathfinder, and they all have Scout. Mm -hmm. uh, price point, Steady 130 for troops. He went with troops. Yep. Yeah, you max, out, you max out on the number of attacks because the regiment's only two more attacks. And the, of course, these guys are such a problem. I actually but played him last night and they mm -hmm. dished out. They were, they were annoying. Yeah, only unit strength of one on the units, whereas yeah. if you have a regiment, you have it's three unit strength. But um, yeah, I don't think he's, he's really hurting. To help his center, he has the Sea Guard, which the Sea Guard are actually one of my favorite units. Yeah, they're kind of, they're kind of like a, a meh unit. Um, yeah. they, they don't excel at anything in particular, but they do, they're, they're a good uh, jack of all trades. Yeah, they're useful Where did they tool. give him? Steady aim? Is that what changed? 
I'm not sure what they give them. Right. Rephrenium Seaguard, no, they do have steady, yeah, yep. steady aim, I think, is what they got. But I think that's the That new... may make a huge difference. Um, yeah, he's got Liliana's tier on them, uh, but elite, elite melee, okay, only melee. Yep, only um, melee. And phalanx, so that's not, not too bad. It, it comes in handy when someone's going after you with uh, some sort of flying critter. Yep. Cat. Unit strength four, and mm -hmm. then he's got the Stormwind Cavalry, mm -hmm. and he gives them the potion of the cat. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, uh, the any issue with any of the cavalry is that they don't have crushing. So yeah, yeah. Once you hit them first, or they don't kill you right away, then all of a sudden they're sixteen attacks, hitting on threes mm -hmm. with nothing, just mm -hmm. base, and that could be the problem for them. They're either hit or miss, right? Yep. Like most cat. Yep. The Dracon Riders. Well, that's one of the top units in an elf army. They've got crush one. Thunderous one, elite, 18 attacks, decent nerve at 15, 17. They are expensive like all elves though. That's a great unit though, and they I played last night with uh, Brian and those gave me a real serious problem. Mm -hmm. He has the Elven King, which of course with all the upgrades, hits on twos, five attacks, he gives it the um, shard blade, he gives it, which gives it the plus one to hit. The saber-toothed mm. cat, which gives mm. him a duelist. Mm -hmm. Then he adds the scythe of the of the har harvester. Yeah, you'd want to with only five attacks. You want to buff that up. Yeah. Yeah. Hitting on twos, elite. That's, Mighty that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. And he's got a looter, so that'll sit back and, and buff his units that we said in the middle. Mm -hmm. Our elven archmage, lightning five. He's got the long range heal with this guy, which is really nice. King's Champion, love this King's Champion because all of a sudden this guy adds Aura Fury, which is basically the entire list almost gets that. Yeah. For Kindred only, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Giving Elves Fury, that's really good. Yeah, that's handy. Really that's handy. handy. And Duelist on that guy mm. as well, so he can actually protect himself with seven base attacks. They ate all your dandelions, kill them. So Brian's list, the weakness I see in it, he's only got 12 drops. He's right at the near bottom. He's yeah, only got 21 unit strength. Unit strength is low as well. And that's elves, right? Like yeah. you have to, if this is the build you're going to go with, because things are pricey. So yeah. the I could see him having problems with Happy Nook's list if he faces him because of that unit strength difference. Mm -hmm. Large armies, he may have a problem. If, yeah. Where I think he'd ha be able to do well is if he faces off against armies like the other elves the kin well, or my i think my elves because um my uh glade stalkers have stealthy true stealthy and cover it's minus two to hit minus two uh, is neutralizing his fire so but that's direction. contingent on you using that right yeah, yeah. like that, that's how instead yeah. of uh like using hills to yeah. just take my shots i would be using forests to uh yep to help me get a little bit of cover for that i'm not i'm not saying you can't yeah. do it i'm yeah. saying it matches up well mm -hmm. But then you start doing exactly what you said. Yeah. Is start thinking about what what are the tactics I have to employ. Yeah. It matches up well against rats. Mm -hmm. I know this army matches up against me very well. My army. We played last night and we tied. Mm -hmm. And it could have gone his way. Mm -hmm. Could have gone my way. But again, all that shooting with those glade stalkers, hitting defense four, re-rolling those ones is yes. a serious yep. issue. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Next one. Okay, this looks like Dale's list. I like this. And is Dale's new list. Yeah, which... I played it last against it last night, and yeah, um, yeah I, I think uh, my army did fairly well because that cavalry unit of mine just kicked butt, and he bounced off on main line. But it was it was scary to look at, um, especially uh, with sixteen units. He was out dropping me, uh, so at the end I had a hard time uh, countering things I was actually a little worried, but um, yeah, it, it turned out working well for me. I think it, Dale, you know, having had some practice games now, I think he'll rethink some of his tactics because I played him last night as well too in our second game. And again, it went, it was pretty one-sided, but I think there were some, some tactical mistakes with a new, he's basically mm -hmm. like a new player because all of a sudden playing with all this fast stuff, which he isn't used to, mm -hmm. as you said earlier, you've got to, You've got a tag team, you've got to hit, when you charge, you should be hitting two of these units on one thing. Yeah. Not just an Abyssal Half-Breeds. 16 attacks isn't gonna break anything. No, no, not likely. But if you're hitting with 32 attacks, mm, yeah. with Crush One, Thunderous One, Vicious. Well, I'd even go the Slave Orcs plus the Abyssals. Plus one yeah. and one, right? Yep, just yep. like that. He's got a character going with him as well. And the key advantage that you stated, he's got more drops, a little higher on the average drops, right? He's got uh, six, 16 as opposed to 13 or 14. That gives him a little tactical advantage. 
And he's got some nice, he's got long range shooting. He's got some nice buffs here with a hex caster to be able to hex stuff. He's got the Veil of Shadows, which he's got to remember to use because he, he had it last night and it's new and he forgot to use it. And like one thing, he's Ab Abyssal Dwarf Ironcasters are both rocking Fireball 10. Fireball now has Shattering, yeah. but he also has that Ariag Fool's Flame, which I believe gives Vicious to yes. the Fireball as well. So he actually did quite a bit of damage with his Fireballs yesterday before I ran him over with my horses. So there's the key, right? <laughs> yeah. Use those rather than using the heal three. If you don't need the heal three, if you've got yeah. one or two uh, wounds on a horde mm -hmm. or on your on your um, on your uh, what are they called? The uh, golems, and the black souls, and whatever. Do that. Use the get the fireball. Get that shooting yeah. out so you're plucking things on units. But I like Dale this list, and I think Dale's going to have some success with yeah. this. I think it matches up against a number of armies, as you said. The, you know, he had, a, he had a game with you last night, it didn't go well. I mm -hmm. think next time he plays you, he'll play you a little different. Yep. It matches up against elves really well. It mm. matches up, because shooting, you shoot me all day, bro. I'm yeah, yeah. defense six. For most of it, yeah. Well, his his army there, um, a lot of his army is defense four. Well, the, the, the orc, the yep. chaff, he puts yep. those in front. So, so and even his abyssal half-breeds, they're only yeah. defense four. They're very vulnerable to firing. Yeah, I play Drew on the on the stream yeah. uh, last weekend, or was the weekend before, whenever, and um, he threw uh, his two units of um, Abyssal Halfbreeds at me, yeah. and I mowed them down. I, I traded one unit of Blade Stalkers for two units of Abyssal Halfbreeds, so that was, I think I came out well on So what's that your one. advice for Dale? How does he? Um, for that one, uh, I would be using terrain to mask from fire, yeah. and, uh, and you know, uh, maybe using the gargoyles more as chaffing, but at the same time, gargoyles could also. Um, you, there's, the other way uh, of dealing with shooting is if you disorder the shooter. Right. Um, if you've got you know uh, combat characters, or disruption characters, you can cause a lot of problems with, with that. He has his gargoyles, 85 points. They're pretty good. Uh, speed of 10, so speed you know 20. 20 with a turn. Yeah, and if uh, if those um, if those shooters have scout, there's a good chance that uh, you know 50 chance on that roll off the first turn that you might be able to charge into those um, those shooter units on the first turn and he's really neutralize it. Yeah. And if he does that, then um, the abyssal halfbreeds and the slave walker gore riders will be kind of unmolested for the approach. Uh, but yeah. that's just on my army. But yeah, um, Dale, I should have told you to skip forward a couple minutes. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I also noticed he has here is the Black Souls. Yeah. Um, and he, they have the Fiery Bulwark. So every time it uses Iron Resolve, they gain D3 points back, which yes. is amazing. That's amazing. Um, so otherwise, it's kind of the, the general stuff, the Potion of the Caterpillar and the Boots of Striding on his uh, Abyssal half -breed. Makes sense. Um, the Golem Hordes are Golem Hordes. They are, you know, they're annoying. Um, Gargoyles, he also got, has Basuzu's Vile Brood. Um, which uh, is regeneration, well, you yeah, know, always gargoyles have regeneration, but they don't usually last very long. That has a little bit more. Those uh, Katush, uh, yeah, what is it, Katsuchan. Yeah, okay, just play on the Russian name. Yeah. Um, rocket launchers, uh, they have three attacks hitting on fives, uh, ignoring cover, uh, indirect. Um, so they're actually quite good. With Vicious. Uh, with Vicious. Um, it's only piercing one. Um, they were plinking away and doing some damage. Um, not like, you know, the mortars where you had the chance of like just blowing things off the table. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they're, they're actually quite handy. And then he has the Hex Castle with Veil of Shadow, so that'll be uh, helping uh, him defend against shooting. And that Hex is a real pain. He, he shut oh, me yeah. down. He shut my uh, uh, Broodmothers down, or one of them, every turn last last game. Yeah, and not being able to move if you want to cast, even when your like, Hex okay. is, is. That was a, an enhancement they introduced, which really makes a difference. Which I like. I do yeah. like that. No, I, I like this list. I think Dale's going to have some real success with it, and I think he's got some ideal pa yeah, uh, 16 pairings. units, right? Uh, 16, 16 drops. And 25. 25 units. Yeah, yeah so yeah. a little bit above average. All right. All right. Okay, so this is Dan. Yes, uh, this, this is, is an interesting one. Uh, this is the one we've been excited. So, uh, so, so I noticed with Dan, he, he actually left himself five points short. So advice to new players and, and, and Dan, use that five points. I'm sure you can get a five point item. You could have put fire, um, mm. fire oil, blade of slashing, put, uh, blade of slashing. You could have put um, uh, the periscope mm -hmm. uh, on something, you mm -hmm. know, use it. Mm -hmm. um, 
So food for thought for next time. Mm -hmm. uh, shield wall, like so. Again, we look start looking at this, going, oh, okay, what do we got? Uh, go right to the bottom. This is the one that showed up earlier. He's got 17 units and 32 unit strength. So there's the strength of this yeah, army. Yeah. Yeah. Volume. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's got a shield wall, lots of indomitable will. Literally my uh, favorite almost. army upgrade that you can take. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just to be able to click your fingers and say, I'm no longer wavered, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm fearless, fearless for, the next, for the next turn. Yep, that comes in handy. Uh, spear phalanx, of course, phalanx, there you go. These guys uh, hit on fours, 30 attacks, 210 for that poise with a domino will. It's a uh, yeah, good anchor. Good anchor. And then look at all these foot guard. Oh, yes, so many <laughs> foot guard. But, you know, defense five for the majority of them. Yep. And uh, then he has uh, one um, with, uh, he gave the two handed weapons to. So I'm assuming that one's going to be hiding behind as a little Probably. bit of a hammer. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Right? All of them have indomitable will. So you look at them 14, 16, basically they're 16. Mm -hmm. uh, with defense five, that's, that's going to be a real pain to try to deal with. Uh, he's got two units of shooting with a bowman. That's just a plink away and, you know, annoy yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, chairs. Yep. Uh, two knights. Uh, interesting, he went with troops. Uh, a good, really good... One troop and one regiment. One troop, one regiment. A nice item for one of these troops that I would have thought... Oh, yeah, the troop. Would have been that that one that you can only give to a troop. The scouting boots or whatever the hell they yeah, are. The, the nimble the nimble. boots. Yeah. That might have been something to think about. Um, so one troop, one regiment here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then he's got two cannons. A general. Cannons are great. Wizard, this is an, in, like it's, you know, it's it's a pretty basic army, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of threats with that amount of units to have to deal with. And then the Monarch, which the is- The Monarch. Yeah, the uh, Rally 2 on the Knights. Rally 2. And you know, if, if you go back up and have a look at the uh, the Paladin, uh, Paladin Foot Guard, look at them, Knights, Knights, yep. Knights, Knights, everything. Knights, Knights. So everything uh, is running 14, 16, so 16, 18. 16, 18, Indomitable Will, 16, 18. Yeah, so yeah, really keying in on that. I could see this army giving so many armies a problem just mm -hmm. because of sheer volume. Yeah, yeah. Right? He can give up half his unit strength, trade trading you, and okay, if you take away 16 unit strength from my army, great, I'm down to like five or uh, like eight, seven unit strength left. Mm -hmm. He still has 16 unit strength to deal with. No, I'd love to see this list against God, uh, Brian. Yeah, so would I. Yeah, these, so, these two together. Cross your fingers, boys. We're going to randomize it, but this is a, this is a mainlander be... versus an islander. That would be a beautiful first round. Mm -hmm. If it is, we're putting them on the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put them on top table. Top All right. table. All right. All right. Uh, 32 unit strength and 17 uh, drops. So pretty tough. Yeah, that's going to be a fun army to watch. Well, now we pull up our champion from the last, um, uh, well, Dan was, uh, he was the best general of our last tournament. Uh, and then in the previous tournament at Kippers, he finished first best overall. Mm -hmm. So this is the, this is obviously one of the favorites uh, coming in. Dan's had great success with yeah, this army. We, we call Dan Rain Dan because um, he's, uh, he's, he's borderline brilliant. Yes, he is. He, <laughs> so Dan, so you, uh, little little story backstory about Mr. Dan Wright. He is one of the nicest guys you'll meet, uh, but when it comes to games, he is just literally a savant. Savant. It's not <clears throat> just Kings of War. Mm -hmm. He does it in 40k. Mm -hmm. He does it in Age of Sigmar. He does it in uh, what was that uh, Steam Steam? Uh, what was it called? Warmer Hordes. War, War Hordes. Yeah, War yeah. Machine, uh, yeah. Uh, War Machine. <laughs> Uh, so it's it's Dan Dan a blood bowl Dan is just he has a brain cells to spare at the moment. Like um, I'm thinking when he gets to our age, I'd like to see how he is. Well, he hope, I, I hopefully I remember being brilliant once. <laughs> hopefully he'll let us catch up to yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, again, a top notch guy, really fun to play games with. Just anticipate that. Very it's, exciting. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking at his list. It's the it's the generic. He's got the primes with the brewish sharpness. He's got two score. The scorch wings are a new addition for him. I, I mean, only Dan could make look at these 200 point units that have thunderous one and some shooting and go. These are worth it. I'm well, not a big now. fan of these, but I'm he think makes they're awesome. them work. I don't like them. I, I, I can't like. I can think of that's 400 points that I would rather spend somewhere else. Speed 10. Speed, yeah. Nimble. Yeah. Why? But 400 Thund points. Yeah, you know, like thunderous charge, steady aim. Like that, you get that on the flank of something, you yeah. can start causing a lot of trouble. Now, the good thing I really like about this unit is that they're defense four. So yeah. I'm not worried. 
No, so, no. Well, that's, this is the thing. For the, a similar investment, could you not take two beasts of nature? I, I don't know. So it's so probably something. pretty close. That, but look at the unit strength. Unit strength three. Well, that's a, unit strength one. That's unit, so that, that is how it, it's unit yeah, strength six that you can't up. ignore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but Dan makes it work. Like I yep. said, I, I just don't look at this and go, it's not how I would do it. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why Dan is Dan and I'm in I'm me. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. That's, that's why he's better. Yes. <laughs> um, Riverborn Nyad Worm Riders. This is literally my favorite change in the Clash of Kings. Mm -hmm. These guys got such a buff, and I think they're an auto-include now in any uh, Forces of Nature army. They are Crush 1, Thunderous 2, Regen 4, Pathfinder, uh, they're defense four, but with all that, you don't care. 15, 17, 18 attacks. I'm looking at all this stuff so far. I'm thinking, mmm, yummy for my Glade Stalkers. Like, all of it just looks like, yeah, take it off, take it off, take it off, oh, take it off. for you. So, yeah. Again, that's a nice yeah. pairing, right? <clears throat> but then you've got elementals walking up the field. Uh, these yeah. things, these air, a greater air elementals. Speed 10. Lightning Bolt 3, each of those. Mm -hmm. Speed uh, 10 Shamble is crazy. Yep. Jumper and Nimble as well, I believe. They are Crush One, Nimble, Pathfinder, Thunderous oh, yeah. One. Just jump around, jump over, turn around, and get surged into the rear. How yeah. rude! How rude! Yeah. And the, and of course he does have Surge Four. Uh, is mm -hmm. it Surge Four? Yeah, he has Surge Four. But Zephyr's Crown, what does that give them? That's a Wind Blast. Wind Blast as well. Mm -hmm. So he has a Wind Blast there four. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lightning Bolt six in this army as well. This is a little change for him. I don't. This is a nice yeah. little tweak that he's done. I like this with the two greater era. I remember he had one. Yeah, now he has the two. That's nice. Uh, uh, a Glade Walker Druid with a periscope. See there, there we were talking about uh, Daniel Hahn, Mr. Hahn, that uh, little periscope, you put it on a hero and all of a sudden they have, for purposes of line of sight, height, this guy would have height three. Yep. With Blizzard two, which is the long range uh, shooting, which is nice. Um, uh, Blizzard 2 Surge, oh, Surge 8. So he has a total of Surge 12 oh, yep. in this army. Yep, yep. Uh, actually, no, another Surge, is that another? No, Surge 12. And then he's got a shooter with a Scorched Earth 3. So gonna give you, uh, mm -hmm. you're gonna be hindered. Yep. And look at this, uh, allies, three uh, regiment, regiment, horde. Uh, cheap unit strength. Yep. Your cheap unit strength, mop up launcher as well with a whiz with weakness. Mm -hmm. There's, very, very nice army. 15 unit strength, 25. So uh, I think a beautiful matchup that I would love to see is Mr. Dan Wright playing Brian or playing Luke. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a nice rematch there. This this is a little tweaks to, to this army to make some changes. Uh, threats to this army, of course, are uh, things with lots of shooting. Uh, Brian's unit strength. Um, Things with lots of failings could give this army some issue. How are we doing for time, Brian? Oh, plenty of time. Excellent. Yep, yep. So again, uh, we're gonna come back. I, I, I've already seen a couple lists I think that I'm gonna say are gonna be in my top picks for lists. So moving on, we've got the highest uh, durability. and One of the Maybe. highest dur is Mr. Dwarves. Yes, Drew Allen. Drew is a dwarf. He is a big dwarf fan. He, he tried to go into dust and decided, no, I miss my dwarves already. Uh, he look at this. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is a total of 18 unit strength. With of course the hardy iron guard. Yep, all carrying ma mastiffs. All carrying mastiffs. So they got that one sort of shot. Uh, I'm going to release them. Yeah, this, this is solid. This is a solid mm. list actually. Mm -hmm. And this we've this is a tournament list for dwarves. This is what you see a lot of. Yeah. Two greater earth elementals doesn't need any items with those mm -hmm. because. We go down below and we've got the Sacred Horn, Bane Chant 2. Uh, he took a of Shadows. Surge, though. And replace Surge with Radiance with Life. Dwarf so he's Home. not really worrying about the Surge. Well, I'll see what else he's got further down. Veil of yeah. Shadows. Yeah, to, yeah. Uh, okay, this one. Radiance of Life. And, and does have Surge, Surge 8. Mm -hmm. uh, later on. Uh, yeah, go down Stone next Priest. Oh, okay, go, so Surge he has eight. two Stone Priests, one uh, which is a Bane Chanter. H periscope uh, as well. Yep, and then one below there with the celestial restoration if he needs it, and then the surger mm -hmm. uh, battle standard with the loot. So he has how many sources of uh, bane chant? Uh, two bane chanters. 
which is nice to give those stone guys or anything else a crushing, extra crushing. Ooh. And this is a new addition for Drew, which I, I, I really respect. I like this. I think you need it for dwarves. I think this is where 2300 really, I'm starting to really get my head around and like. Mm thinking about all the historical armies that, you know, out there, you know, yeah, 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 dwarves working with elves, yeah. Dwarves working with <laughs> elves. They, they got, yeah. they convinced some elves. They probably gave them the jewels after all. Yep. Uh, here, yeah. well, all right, you can have the jewels. Yeah, you Just can bring have, a dragon, have, okay? Yeah, yeah, we'll swap you jewels for dragon. There we go. Uh, the Glade Stalkers, of course, you're going to take those. Gives them some elite shooting with scouting. Uh, and you're unlocking the Kindred Dragon Lord with Crush 3 Elite. Uh, 1719 Dragon's Breath with steady aim. I think this is going to be a, t uh, a really nice army for Drew to take out, and he's going to threaten every single army. Elf army's not yep. going to want to face this guy. Yep. They're going to be really annoyed that they're going to have to deal with an elf dragon lord yeah, and it's, it's some late stalkers. It's going to be fun. Uh, I think this army pairs up really well against a rat army as well, or a, or a, actually, this army pairs up against most armies. Yeah, yeah. Its I'm... weakness is speed. Speed. Yep, yep. So any of the mission criteria that say run out and grab those tokens as fast as you can, he's going to be behind, so he may have to throw his little dragon lord out there so, and yeah, or the late stalkers. But other than that. Mm -hmm. Not an army any of us would want to face. Yeah, I, I, that one I think is the one I would be most worried it's about. It's your kryptonite. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a hard one for me. But a solid, fun guy to play, so if you face him, you'll have fun. Yep, unit strength threat on the average, total units, um, probably one less than you'd expect, but yeah, good. It's, it's a nice solid list. Drew makes nice solid toolkit lists. And then we go to uh, one of our new guys in our community. So if you get to play Trevor, he's a solid, uh, friendly, friendly guy. Uh, he's a new player, so be nice to him. Um, he's new to our community, but he's, uh, sorry, in Kings of War community, but he's not new in the gaming community. He is an avid gamer, loves to play a number of other games, which I'm sure you'll get him to talk about. Uh, like I said, friendly uh, guy, fun to play. Uh, he's got a nice dust build here. We look mm -hmm. at this, he's got two Phalanx Hordes, mm -hmm. Rev Cav, uh, some nice chaff with his flying scavengers. Of course, look what you like to see in a dust army. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this? Two hordes of slave guardians, two hordes of archers. No, I'm, I'm thinking this is a fairly solid uh, co combat army. Um, the only thing I'm seeing, like, um, Emperor of Dust can really lean into the healing yeah. as well as the high defense. Yeah. Um, so I tend to go more with the reanimated Beemoths. Uh, for Defense 6. For Defense 6. Um, but at the same time, having those uh, 18 um, shots each from the Slave Guardian Archers with Piercing 2 and 30 inch range is pretty damn awesome. My advice to Trevor would be keep those two together mm -hmm. and pick the same target. I got to face Drew in the last tournament and it came very, very close. It came down to a double one uh, at the end between him beating me mm -hmm. and he double one. Yeah. And I managed to steal the game. but these enslaved guardians mm -hmm. in one in turn one mm -hmm. he deleted a defense five chariot unit yeah because they just they both picked them yep that's 30 that's the what 36, 36 shots 36 shots hitting on fours 12, 12 hitting uh, hitting on fives hitting on fives that's right hitting on fives pierce two two so you're doing what eight eight or so maybe At eight least, or nine yeah. wounds which is which is decent yeah um, then you have the uh, the soul snare if it's in range it was uh, drain life nine on whatever it's hitting as well um, is quite useful that is, what, what does the monolith do remind me about the monolith. Uh, the monolith at the beginning of your movement phase it has I think a 24 inch range surge oh. but it has to be cast before anything else um, which can be a problem um, that restriction on when you can do it um, makes me not take it because you have to do it first. It's the first. It's I remember first it was something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, he's got 13 unit strength, 23, uh, uh, yep. 23 unit strength, 13 units. Mm -hmm. It's a good list, I think, yep. for his first, uh, for his first sort of tournament and new to the community. This is going to be a learning tournament for him. So it's just, and then he can start tweaking the list after this. Well, yeah, he's like he's got what heal 10 as well yep. as drain life nine in yep. the list. So that's actually pretty good. I could see him pulling off, uh, you know, a, a win or two, maybe. Yeah, uh, we're using Sebek Ray the Accursed. Um, that allows him to both heal, uh, heal and surge the same target. Yep. So that's uh, pretty handy. Good list. All right. All right. My f probably my favorite opponent 
from the last tournament, Mr. Zane. What a solid, solid fun guy to play. He's got the old traditional uh, GW gores, and it literally is a flood of gores. Um, but he's doing the herd. He's got, uh, look at his longhorns. He's got one, two, three, four, five, five longhorn regiments. regiments. Nice, 20 one with attacks. with the gods. You know, but yeah, one with the blessing of the gods. Two fast cav uh, Gur Panther troops just to annoy rallying, you. Rallying, really a lot of rallying there. Yeah, a lot of rallying, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're not 14, 16. Yeah, yeah. They're going to get, most of those are going to get the 16, 18. Yeah. 16, 18. Yep, yep. Uh, Beast of Nature, solid that. I love the Beast of Nature. There it is. That we were talking about that before with Dan. Yeah. It's 205. It's the same cost, basically. Yeah, yeah. Two of those instead, but that's just me. Uh, you do lose unit strength, uh, but I like this guy. I like the Beast of Nature. A little bit of, of fly, uh, shooting from it. Yep, got some shooting. Um, Centaur Chief. Mm -hmm. uh, bo -bo -bo. He's got the Sabertooth uh, Cat, which I, I that gives him Duelist. Mm -hmm. Scorched Earth on the Gladewalker uh, Druid. Yeah, nice call there. Get rid of Thunderous. Uh, this is the other guy. He has another, so he has a second flyer with nine attacks. Crush two, Thunderous one. Fury, Nimble. This guy's a real threat. He's Avatar, a real... Yeah, Avatar the Father. I've never actually seen him. So uh, interesting. Yeah, and then he's got a for, he's got the formation, which I don't. What does this formation do? Uh, ten attacks. Uh, their regiments, the tribal sappers, then ensnare pathfinders. This is new. Way to go, Zane! You've got some new units here. This scout is nice and ensnare. In scout, yeah, scout and ensnare, so he can bog stuff down. Train. Yeah, while his gores are marching up the field. Yeah, the, these guys uh, would be very handy. What's deadly ensnares do? Whenever a unit of information is touching difficult terrain, is attacked in melee, taking it immediately receives D3 points of damage. Ooh. So that's actually pretty handy. No nerve test, so it's all, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Just immediate damage. Yep, yep, that'll come in handy for the uh, the next turn, the counter attack. Um, 13 and 15 with defense three. Mm. Um, you know what? Yeah, it's the ensnare and uh, being in the forest that's really going to help that unit out. And look at what the tribal tracker does. Gives him, gives them vicious. Oof. Okay. Nice. Nice. And that's the scout. The mm, fact that handy. all of those have scout. Mm -hmm. Oof. That could be that could be very very dangerous. Yeah, I'm yeah. You could, you could, you could move up on the flank. We had a really table. good game. It was a chess match in there. So and now he has those. I, I'm not looking forward to that. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Well, your same list as last time. Hopefully, you won't. Nobody will see it. Hopefully, uh, well, we'll see. I'm I'm there as if we need me to play. Uh, just just simply because with 18 people, uh, 17 uh, people total, uh, obviously I won't allow a buy round. That's not fun for anyone. So I'm going to play if if I have to. Mm -hmm. I took the same list as the last. So everyone that saw my list, you know what to expect. Uh, you know, your thoughts on it. It's a fairly yeah, successful... Plague, pot, plague pots are going to be handy. Huge. Um, for those, yeah, you're you're eating your wretches and stuff like yep. that. Phalanx. Yeah, you got Scud, which will be causing trouble. Yeah. Um, Scarecrows of the Void Lurker. Yeah, the Void Lurker causes problems. It's speed 10 with melee 3 with 10 attacks. Yep. Crushing Strength 2 and Stealthy. Only defense of 4. Um, so, 17-19. For me, that would be a bit of a risk to engage with all my shooting. Oh, um, you're, you're, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I would think twice about it because having that 17, 19 nerf and regeneration five up, yeah. Um, you know, that I'm dealing with stealthy, um, I probably would still take a shot, but yeah, would have to see. Yep. Uh, 23, 13 for unit strength and drops, so just a little bit under average. Yep. But um, it's a nice solid list. Um, Toolkit's got a lot of everything. Yep. It, its weakness is exactly what we pointed out. It's um, defense. Defense. Yep. A lot of shooting. When it faces a lot of shooting, stuff goes away. Yep. All right. All right. Brother Mark. Okay, so this is at Nico. We haven't seen Nico, I don't think, at one of our tournaments, so I'm really excited to meet Nico. Uh, Brother Mark, never played him, never played a Brotherhood Army. Uh, certainly not with the brother mark. Uh, I haven't. Love the fact that they get Bowman with Phalanx. Mm -hmm. uh, he takes two regiments, uh, yep. which is nice. A little shooting and then come get some and I've got Phalanx, so. Phalanx and Farol, so yeah. that's gonna be handy. And he's got a, a nice Phalanx unit there with Iron Resolve. 30 attacks, 21-23, which is nice to hold his center. 
Order of the Abyssal Hunt with the Wine of Elvenkind. It's an expensive upgrade at 40 points, but nimble on Cav after having him on my Cav is amazing. Now look at this Cav though, they come with Crushing Strength. Crushing Strength one, but only Thunderous Charger one. Right. And so not quite as good as mine, but they do have a Slayer melee and D3. Vicious. Uh, and Vicious. Um, so yeah, pretty damn good. They're expensive. Yeah, yeah. But they are they are going to hit you hard. Yeah, and he still has two units of knights as well. It's so a, he's got a, he's got a heavy wing there. Yeah, he's going to put two knights probably with abyssal hunt on that one side. Uh, that's going to be a crazy flank to deal with. Yeah. Got an ogre palace guard, which you know mm -hmm. anything that hits you with three hits you on threes with crush two, 18 attacks. They got iron resolve themselves, so you really need to one round them. Otherwise, they're going to do some serious damage. Yep. Yep. Siege artillery, nice. Not regular artillery type thing, you know, ignoring cover and just boom. Yep. So they're pretty good. What's the hunter do? Um, the exemplar hunter, okay. So I have a brand new uh, Brother Mark army, which, or Brotherhood army, which will appear on the stream uh, probably after this tournament. Nice. Um, and these exemplar hunters are awesome. Um, you can do various things with them by picking up the order ofs. Uh, so this one took the order of the wolf. So it goes Rampage uh, D3, so more against units, uh, against Pathfinder, Scout, and speed is six. So basically you can scout this guy into areas. They also have um, Duelist. Oh, they do? Pathfinder, yes. So 10 attacks, well, well basically, potentially what? Uh, five, so seven to, seven to nine attacks. Sorry, seven to seven, five, six six to eight attacks from him with duelists, so potentially up to 16 attacks. Holy smoke. Crushing strength two. Um, so the gauntlet's what gave him the um, the duelist. That's nice. So it's, it's actually handy. Now, my one that I have, I'm running with uh, Wings of the Honey Maze, and I'm using the uh, Order of the Hawk. So she has a 18 inch crossbow, five shots, uh, piercing one, um, which also has Slayer. So, so it hits the big stuff. It hits the big stuff. Nice. So that, that's actually a handy little unit um, there. So Bearer of the Holy Icon. Um, yeah, Inspiring Iron uh, iron Resolve. So and cheap, cheap. Uh, cheap, cheap. One attack only. Um, inspiring source, really. And fast inspiring source. Fast so they're inspiring. going to be able to stay wherever they want. Yeah, one attack um, for what they're doing. I, I, don't think I'm much of a fan of that, but the price is cheap, very cheap. Cheap? Yeah. 75 cent point points for an inspiring move uh, mm -hmm. move eight. Uh, they, and they're nimble too, so mm -hmm. move 16. Yep, yep. Uh, that's nice. War Wizard, what's he got? He's got Lightning Bolt four and Scorched Earth three. Very nice. Yep, yep. That's going to be handy. That's so, going to be handy. And then the High Paladin on Dragon. Yep. Blessing of the Gods. Okay. 20 points. Might probably go for maybe Blade of Slashing instead, save some price, save some, um, or, or may, maybe Potion of the Caterpillar to allow you to uh, have a double into terrain if right. there's an objective on it. So that, but still, um, Dragon's Breath, 12 inches, 10 attacks is nothing to uh, to sneeze at. I can see this, this is a solid list. Yeah, this, this is, is a good toolkit. A nice toolkit list. I, I think he matches up against most armies really well. Very close to my list. Yeah, like uh, in terms of, um, again, what are we looking at? He's got a, quite a number of defense five units, so he has a nice average defense. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to say what his weakness is because he has his unit strength, maybe. He's only got 21 unit strength. He's got yeah. 14 units, which is the average, and 21 mm -hmm. is slightly below. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, he's got range. He's got, you know, nice, nice anvils. I think Nuko's going to do well. Looks good. All right. And then we're going over to a Kingdom of Ven army. This is Russ. Okay. Uh, so lots of foot guard. We've seen what the foot guard, oh, but only one of them, the Horde, has the Indomitable Will. And so the other Sharpness. Brew of Sharpness. So, so that'd actually be hitting on two. Twos with Crush, what? He has Crush one there? Crush one, yeah. Okay. Twos with crushing one with 25 attacks. So if he's got uh, Bane Chain in there, that, that would be uh, pretty mean. Cheap horde of militia mob, which is nice. 105 horde. Mm -hmm. uh, that's nice for a cheap, cheap horde. Fanatics, a horde. Hitting on three, crushing yep. strength one, wild charge D3 with 30 attacks. That's crazy. That, that's actually pretty awesome. And they don't waver. Yeah. Well, they're fanatics. That's 22. Yeah. Regiment of knights, some range, two cannons, a giant 
Um, never a bit. I'm never a big fan of Giants. I look. I think they look glorious on the on the field, and you take them for that reason because they're one of the yeah, best. Yeah, melee four. Melee four with uh, too swingy. Yeah, they're too swingy, but they look beautiful on the table. They're my favorite model. I just don't think they've. Um, I don't think they've ever recaptured what Giants used to do in Warhammer. I would love to see them with more crazy gianty ta attacks, mm -hmm. uh, just to make them more thematic. But right now. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Army Standard Bearer um, should loot. probably be a Duke. Um, with a loot, but yeah, price. Wizard, nice wizard. It's got uh, Lightning 3. One on a Pegasus. On a Pegasus. Uh, that's some unit strength you can use to zap out and grab stuff. And it's an anti flyer threat. Those yep. things are a chaff. pain. You chaff them, fly them in, charge a big. Well, only one attack. Dragon. <laughs> hitting on fives. What, hitting on fives? One attack, hitting on fives. Ah, yeah, uh, but you don't have to hit. Uh, you do have to hit, hit yeah, yeah. disorder, so they lose fly. And yeah, move. yeah, you do. Yep, yep. Uh, wizard, uh, again, we've got lightning, lightning three, bark skin. Bark skin there it is. Thing there. So what's he got? He's got defense fives. Uh, Put those on like, the fanatics. Yeah, fanatics and militia mobs and yeah. the, the lower stuff. Yep. There's the monarch again. Yeah. Uh, rally two for the knights, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, crush three. What uh, upgrade? He, he, this is the speed ten one. Yep, yep. So that's nice. Outlaw. What are outlaws? This is the formation. This is the formation. So basically what happens is it gives the units volley fire. Okay. And if I remember rightly, that gives them ignore cover and indirect. So, oh, nice. So you can lob and, uh, yeah. But ignore cover only works if, if I'm in cover, you don't get it. Yeah. I still get cover. But look at this. Eight attacks, eight attacks, four attacks. Mm, you know what? I, I don't think the uh, the humans got uh, a good enough uh, up upgrade. Cheap, cheap formation though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I would think it would be better if it was two regiments and the the brigand rather than uh, than the troops. Right. Um, you know, at least 10 attacks. At eight attacks hitting on a ranged five for 80 points, uh, I think it's a bit, a bit overpriced. So his strengths in this army, of course, has got a nice unit strength of 25 and above average... Uh, drops of 16. Drops, 16 drops. Mm -hmm. So, and Nice toolkit, nice spread of, he's got some shooting, yep. he's got phalanx, he's got ranged attacks. Again, I can see, depending on matchups, you can do, uh, I can see him doing yeah, very no, well. No war machines. No uh, war machines, well, he's that... got two cannons. Uh, did he have two cannons? Yeah, two cannons. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. So okay. com then combine that with a giant in there, maybe all of a sudden it's spiky, like yep, you can yep. get a couple of, especially with a shattering in there, if he spikes, you know what, I've seen you with cannons. Yeah, yeah it happens you hit, Yep. You know, absolutely. All right. All right. Uh, okay. So Tony, we've seen Tony in the community. Tony was our um, best painter in the last tournament. Uh, he is a glorious Ooh, painter. Skittle, Skittle salamanders. Yep, Skittle salamanders. Um, we do have some gorgeous armies uh, coming to this tournament and painted. Uh, so, uh, of course, this is this is uh, Tony's a new build for Tony. He's actually been showing some real success, success with in games as well, cause... Sucky boy. Sucky boy. That was what Tony, we've been screaming at him for a while. You need some of these. That ensnare so you can get your big hammers in later is a really big deal. He's got stealthy ensnare, pathfinder with these guys, uh, and he's got two regiments of them, which is really nice. Uh, the horde of abyssals to hold the center. Mm -hmm. And then he's got, he's got nice chaff with the ghouls, flame bears for his shooting, and is this the, and the Oath Breakers, what do these guys do? Crush one, rally one, mm. nice, that's nice. Regen, vicious, uh, oh, it yeah. gives melee to heroes only. That's, that's, we don't see that much uh, where it's still specific to one type of mm. thing. Mm. Uh, tortured souls, which are crush one, fly, life leech, thunderous two, nice. Yep, They're nice fly and fast. Forms. Yep, uh, yep. Archfiend, he's got one big guy there with, with the potion. I see. I like to see that. You mentioned this earlier. Yeah. Giving something uh, Pathfinder, a big big flyer like this, is yep. a good idea. Bane Chan, bark skin, clever. Yeah, <laughs> bark skin in those stupid. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, Sakivai. Yep. Oh man. And annoying. then the Well of Souls. We love great to unit. see that. This is a great. This is a great list. Tony's got a great list. He's got really high our, uh, unit strength. But low units. He's on yeah. well, low. He's got 13. He's like me. He's yep. below average. Just below. Uh, average. I can see this being this army with its uh, anvils and sticking around, and its ability to counter punch being a real problem with the fury and all that. Mm -hmm. That's uh, interesting. Now, again, weakness for this army is again um, 
total units? Shooting. Shooting. Shooting, you, you focus on the stuff, um, uh, you can make stuff go away. Even like, yes, you have stealthy on those succubi, but okay, I'll still shoot at you with defense three and fives. Yeah, fives, yep, right? yep. So, but again, we're gonna see Tony have some success though because it is abyssal with the fury and he gets stuck in, you're in trouble. Yep. Oh, well, okay, so Mr. Luke, let loose the Kraken. Uh, Luke uh, was extremely successful. Uh, we're gonna make sure that Luke doesn't go on the table this time on the first round because he was there the entire day. day. <laughs> we don't have anything against Luke. We love Luke, but we wanna give Luke a chance to play one game at least off the camera. He plays this army impeccably. He had one hiccup, unfortunately, in the last round in our tournament. Uh, but other than that, this first three rounds, he played some uh, very good opponents and he dealt with them. I think he lost a few more hairs because it was some tough matches for him. Uh, but he knows how to play his Trident Realm, eh? Wouldn't you think? Yep, yep. So the, the big thing with this army is the Ensnare. And um, what? And Ensnare. Yeah. And more Ensnare. Yeah, <laughs> more Ensnare. <laughs> um, the Knuckers uh, were, uh, I think, men of the match, but uh, he might have dropped one and switched out he for did. a Coral Giant, maybe, or he did. something else. Or maybe the Kraken, I'm not sure. Uh, Kraken. Last time he had the Coral Giant, he still has it. But now he has a Kraken, which has base 12 attacks, hitting on fours. It also has Ensnare. Uh, what else does it have? Regen 4, Strider, Wild Charge. Uh, the Coral Giant, I believe he had that last time. Again, all Ensnare. Mm -hmm. So big guys with Ensnare. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a very, uh, very frustrating army to fight against. Um, now his full Aquamage has the has bark skin, which is going to be amazing considering he's got a lot, a lot of low defense. Yep. Um, if I was to play this list, um, I think I would probably have a bit of an advantage with the amount of low defense that he has in his list. Just sit back and pew 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 before pew, pew, he pew. closes on you. Yep. Yep. Uh, the one thing I'll try I'll try to remember, I was so worried about his little swarms last time. They don't have stealthy. Mm. The little swarms that he puts in front to protect units, just plink them off if you have shooting. Yep, yep. So that's it. But th uh, to me, this is, uh, this is again, I, I put this in one of the top lists. Mm -hmm. Luke knows how to play them. Uh, he's a fun guy to play against. He's like Dan. He's very competitive. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's got great unit total units, 15. Unit strength is 23. That's a decent total. Yep. It's just, just again, it's yep. in stare. You got to yep. deal with it. A lot of ensnare yeah. and, and quite a bit of stealthy. That's it. All right. All right, we're covering through the list a little quicker now. Uh, Twilight Kin. Okay, so this is Kristoff. Welcome back, Kristoff. We haven't seen you in a while. Kristoff and his lovely wife had a baby, so he's been busy for a while. Uh, but he's come charging back with his uh, Twilight Kin, which of course I love to see, as they like to worship the Night Stalkers. Uh, and he's got some of that in here, so we'll start off with, he's got two regiments of impalers. Uh, these guys, are, they're solid. Yeah, 15 attacks hitting on threes, and with crushing strength one, and you know, elite melee, plus and fury. fury, which yep. is an, a, a, the basically elves with fury. Oh, man. Looking good. Looking good, right? Tall yep. spears, hammer of measured force there, gives them some phalanx in the middle. Yep, 30 attacks is always good hitting on fours. Elves, decent um, nerve. Elite from melee, which yep. is not too bad. Now, beautiful. The, the part we come to, which I think you're gonna love. I think to me, if used wisely, these are the best Glade Stalkers in the game. Oh yeah. Yeah, but that, that Dream Slayer Venom is crazy. It allows them to, uh, it basically gives them a hammer of measured force. For, for in every life. unit. He's got yep. three of them. I yep. think he started last week. He yep. started with two. Well, well, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll rethink that one. If the meta, is lots of high defense units they're awesome they're awesome as soon as the meta you know it goes more to an average stuff then they're average because you yeah know, you, you throw a defense two or defense three unit you're actually getting a buff you're getting a buff <laughs> so, so that's guys, the key yeah the row chaff at these units yeah like dale will be throwing his gargoyles at him mm -hmm. uh and all of a sudden you're just saying thank you I, i'll take that buff Yep, yep. So. Um, with rats, he, he used them. We had a game there. We had two games the other week, and he used them the first game not so well, and the second game he used them very well because he threw them at my chariots. All of a sudden, they're wounding those chariots on fours mm -hmm. instead of yeah, yeah. Fives, fives, right? That's so, beautiful. They're handy. He's got the gargoyles, which are nice, just standard chaff. Yep. He's got a unit of Night Stalker Chromebound Butchers. 
Uh, so stealthy, defense five, crush two with fury is beautiful. Yep, yep. He's got the abyssal horseman, which we've seen in many. Uh, these guys are awesome. Crush one, thunderous one, Jesse's boots. Two bolt thrower elves. So again, those are nice uh, when you combine them on the same target. Veil of Shadows with a Summoner Crone, which is nice, protects him against shooting. Mm -hmm. Soulbane, Boomstick, more Lightning, and then the Blackheart. What's this black? This one is really good. She's got the... Um, Eye of Velak. Uh, that remind me what that does again. Uh, it's rerolls. Uh, at the start of each friendly range phase, um, if she is not disordered, she may select enemy within 12 inches regardless of line of sight. That unit loses Stealthy yep. and Spell Award until the end of the turn. Oh, that's nasty. So that would be great against and my... Uh... All spells targeting this unit may reroll all natural unmodified to hit rolls of one. So Kristoff, if you're listening, we played to uh, last week and I think you had that and you were shooting at my Void Lurker. You got to remember it gets rid of Stealthy because mm -hmm. that would have been so effective against that Void mm -hmm. Lurker. You were still giving me Stealthy. So remember, it takes away Stealthy. You said it takes away something else too. Yeah, it was, uh, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, loses Stealthy and Spell Ward. And Spell Ward, which is a new, uh, that's huge in the game now. Mm -hmm. Some people taking that on a banner, that will get rid of it. So remember that, that's really nice. 14, All right. 27, so higher on the unit strength and um, bad average on the drops. Yep, so I think he's, he's gonna- solid list. Uh, he's Kristoff's just coming back, but I think he's he's ramping up and getting his uh, rules back and all that sort of stuff. So it's great to see him out again. I can see him having a great tournament. All right, this is our friend Vern. Okay, Vern playing one of my favorite armies. Of course, you know how much I like Northern Alliance. How many times have we seen it on the street? Mm -hmm. uh, he's got the new addition, uh, which is basically what was the old thing, which is hey, we can upgrade these guys to Defense Five. They have Crush One. Just a horde of clansmen. Nice to see the clansmen out. Uh, two ice elementals. And look what he's taken. He takes more Tundra Wolves than me. Yeah, just looking at this list, um, I think its unit count is is very low. Only 11. Yeah, on, only 11. Yeah. Yeah, unit strength's fine. Yeah. Only low. Um, and a lot of his stuff, like the Tundra Wolves, you know, only defense four. Mm. But fast. Yeah, but fast, yeah. Look, there's, there's a lot of... That can get in there. I think my army might clear those uh, yep. yeah, those wolves pretty quick. It, it might be difficult for a matchup for him. I think mine's a uh, hard... I think any of the elves. Yeah. That's a tough match. Anything yeah. with a ton of shooting, and he faces those ton of shooting. Yeah. Because even the Frostfang calf, only 15-17. Yeah. They waver, and they yeah. don't have fury yeah. either. So if you can do a lot of plinking now, he's going to park those behind the wolves so he'll have cover. But mm -hmm. still, you'll you'll start carving through that. So it's he's moving on you fast because he yeah. has one, two, three, four, five, six, really seven, really fast units, and and then his Harim as well. So mm -hmm. that game, though his games, mm -hmm. he's never going to run out of time. He's either going to yeah, smash gonna you quick mm -hmm. or gone quick. Yeah, he's going to have to be very uh, very particular with using this army. I think um, I'm I'm thinking really the key is going to be. Uh, uh, entangling people with Chandra wolves for this army. He's, he's got he's got he's got a good a good core for smash. Yeah. But he has almost nothing in the way of ranged. Um, you know, he does have the ice blade with the wings of honey maze, uh, which will help disrupt some enemy shooting. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is uh, a little one-dimensional list. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to have a tough time. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we can agree Mostly there. My, my undead list. Uh, he is a good player. Mm -hmm. So, But I think this is more of a 2,000-point list. And um, um, it's a 2,000-point list. Probably remove the giant. And then it's a good list. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, then you're looking at, if you have 10 units at 2,000 points, you're doing OK. Yeah. But when you have 11 units at 2,300 2, points, you're going to get outdropped. Yeah, and it yeah. Might, might might be a hard time. It's going to be very defensive on the drops. Mm. We'll see. We'll like, see. It, it's it's got a good set of tools. Uh, the tools that he does have, he doesn't have a broad range of tools though. So we'll my prediction how is he could it. have the quickest win in the tournament, and he can also have the quickest the loss. Loss, yeah. So I think he'll split the middle. I think he'll probably finish two and two. I think he's going to do okay. Okay. All right. And here we have Zach. And the last but not least is my guy Zach. 
uh, Saxman, he, he's been inspired by seeing Bard play Undead so much on the stream. Mm -hmm. And then he started wanting to tweak and think, hey, I, I love those vampires. And then he started thinking about putting vampires with werewolves. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of, you know, I was like, yeah, that's why not, buddy. And here's what he came up with. So he's got Chap Horde in the middle, the zombies. He's got two yeah, failings. Looks, yeah. Spearman, which, you know, he's seen your dust with Spearman, loves mm -hmm. the Spearman. Mm -hmm. And we know what a horde of revenants can do. You don't yeah. even need an item on these. Dash 24, defense five, they're a pain. Yep, yep, the only thing I'd probably consider there, I'm not sure they're able to do it, would be to uh, give them the two-handed weapons. Uh, um, I, they can't. They Only can't the get dust a, can do dust that. ones? Okay. Yeah. So that's basically an anvil unit. Maybe the hammer would have been a good idea, but the that's 20 points, points, right? Yeah, yeah. He loves your Soul Reaver infantry which I think you oh. took those once. No, never, I've only got Cav. Oh, you only have the Cav, okay. I only have the Cav, but the uh, Soul Reavers are awesome. Look at these guys, 25 attacks, hitting on threes, threes. and then he gives, he, that's the weakness of them. So he gives one the Chalice and one the Dwarven Ale because they mm -hmm. can be wavered. Mm -hmm. And then he's got two hordes of werewolves, one with the boots, yep. one with a cat. These guys nimble. are on you. They're nimble, their weakness, of course, is only crush one. So he really needs to get in Decent there and defense. combine. Mm -hmm. But defense five, as opposed to the they're herd bad, ones. And they're fast. They're, yeah, they're fast. They're, they're, they're going to be on be... you. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I see those guys uh, fulfilling the role that I use for my Soul Reaver cavalry. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he has a vampire on undead Pegasus. Seven Where, attacks. That's solid. Slashing. Yep. 220 points. Cheat. Life Leech 2. Uh, inspiring, mm -hmm. and he has to inspire his werewolves. He's got the big Lycantis character. That, that's really begging for the Axe of the Giant Slayer or the, uh, the good, right? Yeah, or the Harvester. Yeah, yeah, which he put on his Vampire Lord, which oh, okay. that's what he learned from you. Yeah, yeah. Because this guy is a beat stick. Seven attacks with that plus D3 against infantry. Mm -hmm. Crush two, duelist as well. Individual inspiring, life leech two, and of course, mighty. Love this character. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shroud of the Saint, give him heal five. Mm -hmm. And then uh, only one to do this in this tournament, which I'm surprised because you're seeing it a lot at Masters type tournaments, uh, is the Banner of Abbotshire. Yeah, spell yeah. Ward. Pe people expecting to be running into that uh, one list of lightning bolt spam and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. That'll yeah. protect his vampire. So he's probably going to put that near his vampire on foot to protect them getting spammed by lightning and lightning, other spells. Whatever. Right? Yep, magic. So he's got 27 it. unit strength. Well, here's, here's the thing with this, the banner. It, it's only one pip difference that it's making, which can be a lot to Kings of War, but I'd rather, the, having the magic item slot, you know, I'd, I'd rather put something else on myself. I had it on my Brotherhood. Yeah. And I was looking up, thought, you know what? It's not worth it. Yeah, the, it may not end up being worth it in yeah. our, this tournament, because I don't yeah. see, there wasn't a ton of Lightning, there wasn't yeah, a ton of no spam. You know, we that we see a lot of diverse units. Uh, we don't see a lot of spam, which is nice. So it's it's spam protection, which he probably didn't need. Mm -hmm. uh, 27 units. It's a good list. I think mm -hmm. he's gonna I think Sack's gonna he's gonna have a good tournament. Um, he had some games last night and did very well. Um, I think he's gonna have a better tournament than his last. Yep. yep. So it depends again who he faces. Uh, he could crush people quick, and he could also run into some issues because those, um, you know, that that those those wolves could uh, they only have crush one. Mm. So we'll see. Okay. So All right. um, who are your three favorites? Three favorites. Um, Can't pick yourself. Uh, I would say just looking uh, past performances. Um, uh, Dan, Brian, and Luke would be uh, Brian, Happy Knock, and Luke would be my uh, my three. That Sam's not here. That Sam's not here. Yeah, because um, uh, he'd probably knock one of those one of those three off, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, and Thomas Patterson's not uh, He's here. He's not here either. And he plays well with his army last time. Yeah. Um, so I would think uh, those two fellas. Sorry, those three fellas. Um, what about you? Uh, I mean, obviously we we've got to put Dan in here uh, because he's just proved mm. right over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, we have to put Brian in here because of the sheer unit strength and his ability to play that army. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's to me, it's a toss-up. Luke's in there as well because again, mm -hmm. but he, he, if he it depends if he has rounds like he did last time mm -hmm. or like the last game, he could be in trouble. Uh, I'm very interested to see how Drew does. Yes, yeah. with those dwarves. Yeah. So for me, it's a toss-up in the top three. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I would put Drew and Luke mm -hmm. together as, as in the top three. Any of those guys mm -hmm. could win it. And you've got to put Dan in there because Dan just proven, hey, I'm, I win or, or place high in tournaments every single time. And Brian is, is, uh, is uh, not the wild card, but to me, he's my favorite. Mm -hmm. If things go well and matchups go well for him, I could see Brian taking this whole tournament. Yeah. But if he faces that one army or two armies that he could run mm -hmm. into problems, then maybe it could drop him down. Yeah, I think for me, um, Daniel Hahn and yeah. uh, and Drew would be the two armies that I would not want to face. No, that's right. Um, so I expect I'm probably going to go maybe uh, maybe two one and one with my list. I yeah. think I think that's what I I should expect. Possibly three and one. Possibly. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yep. Yeah. That, I predict for myself uh, two one and one. I'll yep. have I'll have a. I'll, ha I'll probably have to face one of these big guys and uh, potentially get crushed. And then I'll have a close game. My last tournament, I was three and one, but I had one game that was so close to being a tie. Yeah, yeah. So two, one and one would be, I'd be happy with that result. Anything above that is gravy. Anything under that, I would be disappointed. I would not want to face your list because mm -hmm. that sure volume of shooting or yeah, any yeah, of the Glade Stalker lists yep. is, my, is my uh, Achilles heel. Yeah, they're going to do. Uh, they're going to do some damage, I think. Pretty stoked, guys. Um, so yeah, hopefully stream starting next weekend. Um, it'll be announced on YouTube um, on the Victoria Wargaming channel. Um, Whether it'll be live or not, we still don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I will be putting uh, all the army lists as one single download uh, on the Victoria Wargaming website, uh, so people can check them out there. And I'm going to get the keys probably tomorrow in the next couple of days and I'll ask them about can we get an internet code and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the internet code is already there on the wall. Oh, you already checked it out? Yeah, I, I went and that's when I measured it up for the 18 tables. But is it high speed? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know how high speed. It doesn't really take a lot of... A lot of uh, it doesn't? No, uh, bandwidth to upload um, videos, but not on modern days, not modern technology. So depending on how old it is, we, I think we should be fine. Perfect. Yep. We will be doing a draw initially at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the, we hand out, there's one award we hand out right at the beginning, which is the reciprocation award. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for all those fellas that have to travel to get here. Mm -hmm. We'll be handing out a special prize. It'll be randomly drawn to one of those. It's the only prize that's given out at the beginning. Just a way of saying thank you to all those that had to travel long distances to come to our tournament. We really, really appreciate it. So guys, looking forward to seeing all your friendly faces. Um, it'll be your choice to mask up or not. Of course, we're all now on the, it's all relaxed and everything again. I'm not sure, we may mask up, we may not mask mm. up, who knows. Uh, just looking forward to you coming and having a good time. Anything else? No, nope, that's it for me. All right, thank you from Victoria War Games. Uh, guys, if you have Are any you from questions. Where? From where? Victoria War Games. What am I, Vancouver, Victoria Island War Games? What am I saying? Victoria War Gaming. Victoria War we've Gaming. Had this, we've oh, okay. had this discussion before. You're getting old. <laughs> I am getting old. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing I was just going to point out, and I think I might have just forgotten. Right. If you have any questions, don't feel free at any time. You're not going to bother me, fellas. You can reach me on Messenger. Uh, you can email me any last minute concerns, whatever. My email is garethd at 71 at gmail.com. Give me a shout, no problem, and I'll answer your questions regarding the tournament, okay? okay? Looking forward to it. All right, catch you guys later. Take care.